How's it going, you guys? Uh, I'm here waiting for my mother. Uh, we're about to have a good day together. And uh, I wanted to make a quick video while I'm waiting about food sensitivities and how to at least experiment to try to solve them. So I experienced uh, pretty severe food sensitivities for quite some time back in 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, till I went vegan and realized I was intolerant to a lot of whole grains. Uh, now, food intolerance is not the same as an allergy. If you're having hives and you're having an allergic reaction, do not attempt this at all and work with the doctor. But if you're just having digestive problems, uh, irritable bowel syndrome, symptoms like bloating and pooping out undigested food and stuff like that, and you're not bleeding or anything, um, then this video is for you. So basically, there are a number of steps you can take. And if none of these work, chances are you should just avoid the food altogether and make sure you get your nutrients elsewhere. So um, in the case of whole grains, nuts, and seeds, you want to make sure that you try soaking them, sprouting them, um, cooking them, make sure you cook them fully. Um, and if all of those things don't work, um, try cooking them even, even more. Maybe try adding acid to them to help break the food down. Um, try eating them, try combining them with different foods. Try, and, and at the very most, now here's the big thing that a lot of people don't realize. When you add a new food in, especially a whole food, your body has to go through more work to digest it, which is one of the reasons why there's so many benefits associated with it, because it doesn't just automatically convert uh, barley, for example, into glucose in the bloodstream. It has to ferment in your intestines uh, through gut bacteria, through your, mi your microbiome, in order to actually break it down. And once that happens, it takes a lot longer to finally turn into energy, vitamins, minerals, etc. And so what that means is you're not actually breaking down that food. Your bacteria in your intestines is, and this is probably why it's plant foods that most people have trouble with. Um, so you have to realize that these gut bacteria that are responsible for digesting your food and converting it into energy, they can take up to two weeks or more to grow. And that's going to depend on the overall health of your body in general, uh, previous antibiotic use, and um, medic current medications you might be taking, and then any kind of infections you might have in your gut. For example, parasites, H. pylori, and the list goes on. And parasites are a very real thing, and I think it's interesting because before I got into health, there's a lot of people who thought parasites were hokey pokey, but it's actually a really huge um, problem that medical doctors address on a regular basis. Um, you know, even if you cook your food fully and stuff like that, depending on what you're eating, you know, but it's mostly a problem in third world countries. But a lot of people are walking around with uh, bacterial imbalances in their small intestine, like SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. They're walking around with parasites and stuff like that and don't even know it. Now, uh, nine times out of 10, someone who's reading, who's watching this probably doesn't have a parasite. The worst thing you can do is self-diagnose. That's the stupidest thing you can do. And the reason why is because there's millions of different symptoms that parasites can cause that can be easily caused by something as simple as drinking too much alkaline water, which is dumb. You drink alkaline water, you drink baking soda, you're gonna cause um, alkalinity in your stomach, which hinders stomach acid, which completely throws off the rest of your digestive tract. So ultimately, if you can't tell already, the way that I personally solved my own food sensitivities, well, I didn't solve all of them. I don't eat whole grains or beans or anything like that, but I'm starting to introduce them slowly. Essentially, I had to learn how the damn body works, how the digestive system works. And, and that's how you figure out why, like how you figure out malfunctions, as you figure out how something functions first. <laughs> so anyway, um, feeding the gut bacteria, it's primary, it's not about health. It's not like, oh, I have these certain strains in my gut that make my immune system stronger. No, no, no. 
What it is is certain foods actually feed certain bacteria in your intestine with the primary purpose of breaking that same food down. And so it can take weeks or months to build up the particular strain of gut bacteria required for breaking down that food. And the reason why um, certain strains of gut bacteria are associated with greater health outcomes is because certain strains of bacteria that are associated with greater health are fed by healthier foods. So people with so-called healthy gut bacteria are just healthier eaters. And they have the same healthy, so-called healthy gut bacteria because they're eating the same healthy foods, so to speak. And they're participating in other healthy activities. Again, it's healthy user bias. And you have all these like um, people who are gung-ho about gut bacteria and it's all about association and healthy user bias. Anyway, long story short, it can take some time before you can build up the bacteria required for digesting that food. That's key. So people who think, oh my God, I switched from white rice to brown rice and all of a sudden I have symptoms of irritable bowel syndrome. Uh, healthy, you know, healthy eating's a flaw, blah, blah, blah. Well, look, <laughs> obviously white rice is going to be easier to break down. That's the only rice I'll even touch these days because I don't, because two weeks of shitting out brown rice is not fun. But that's a lot of times for many people, especially people who have taken antibiotics for any period of time, the symptoms of, of, of <laughs> The symptoms of, of that can be so bad that you can't sleep at night and stuff like that. So anyway, that might be what you have to do if you are if you got that condition, right? Um, but soaking and sprouting will break down a lot of the uh, harder to digest fibers. And then when you cook them, uh, that'll also help. Breaks down the phytic acid, the anti-nutrients and things. And it makes it much easier to, to digest. For people like me, that might not be enough. But if you haven't tried it yet, it's worth a try. Um, but then you have things like, um, like let's say you have, uh, you have arthritis that's caused by nightshade vegetables. That's very common. Well, now that's a different story. That, I, I, I personally would say that's an allergy. Um, that is an allergic reaction, especially, you know, because people who have like rheumatoid arthritis, doctors claim that's an autoimmune disease. Um, and so it deals with the immune system. But then when people remove nightshade vegetables and things like that, whole grains, they do an autoimmune paleo diet, or some people have to remove all plant foods in general and do a carnivore diet, and they find that their symptoms of uh, rheumatoid arthritis goes away completely. Well, what does that tell you? It tells you you have an allergic reaction to some kind of plant food, and when you remove the damn allergen, symptoms go away. <laughs> so it's kind of, it's really the same thing as uh, somebody who's allergic to peanuts, every time they eat peanuts, they almost die, right? Well, guess what happens when you remove the peanuts? You no longer almost die because you remove the damn cause, trigger food. And so that is, um, that's key here. But at the same time, um, I encourage you to find, you know, other possible reasons as to why that might be. Now... There's digestive enzyme supplements and probiotics. Personally, I don't think probiotics are a good idea. I don't, I don't think they're gonna help. But you could try some of them that other people have found success with. Uh, enzyme supplements can definitely help. Um, they can actually even make you, uh, make it easier for you to digest double the quantity of food you normally would otherwise. Um, just make sure that, for example, in the case of whole grains, you're choosing amylase or an enzyme complex that contains amylase. Because if you just take enzymes, random enzyme supplement, but you're not taking one that has the particular enzyme you need to break down the type of food you're trying to solve, well, then you're not going to break down that food. So enzyme supplements can help, but I found that they don't completely resolve the problem. Nine times out of ten, you're just going to have to wait till your digestive system adapts, okay? Um, and if you have allergic symptoms, then <laughs> that's a whole nother story. So leave your question in the comments down below, um, and I'll make a longer video about this in the future. I've made plenty of videos about this before. Just search your condition or your symptoms or whatever in my channel name, and you'll find them.